Okay, welcome to experiment two three of the Green Crystal Lab. Um, we're going to go over the basics and talk about some important points in the actual lab process. So the point of experiment two is to standardize, meaning to figure out the exact molarity of that potassium permanganate you've already prepared. Permanganate is industrially dirty and it's not 100% pure, so we can say we have so many grams in there, but we probably don't. So our job is to standardize that and figure out what the actual molarity is. It won't be 0.01. It's not going to be too far off of 0.01 or 0.001, I can't remember. It's going to be maybe, a, you know, I don't know. It's just going to be a little off. So you'll be able to determine your percent purity also in this experiment. So we're going to figure out the um, actual concentration through a redox titration. One of the first things you're going to have to do, and I'm not going to do it for you, is balance this redox equation. We're going to use our half reaction method, right? Take out everything that has manganese in it, half reaction balancing, and then we're going to do the same thing with our carbons, and we're going to balance that. The reason you need it is because here is our unknown permanganate, and you're going to weigh out oxalate this is our known. We're going to have moles of our known, determine moles of unknown, and then we can figure out the actual amount in grams to find percent, which you'll see in the calculations when you get to them. So what happens in this titration is we have oxalate in a beaker that we've dissolved, and it's a known amount of oxalate. And in our burette, we have our purple potassium permanganate. We're going to titrate the permanganate. And it's going to be really weird because you're going to be putting purple in and it's going to turn clear. And that's because the oxalate is going to reduce the MN from 7 to 2. And MN is colored when it's plus 7, but it is colorless at plus 2. So at the point where we see a purple color start to form, that means that all our oxalate has now been used up in the process, so that is our equivalence point. So we're looking for a light purple endpoint. So this is a typical titration. There are some different things that we have to look at. Um, you're going to, yeah, this was a student from way back in the day, this super old looking classroom. It was across the hall. That used to be my room. It was really, really a crazy looking room. Anyway. Um, yeah, you, first off, you're going to have a bottle with your permanganate, not your volumetric, and you're going to put a little burette funnel in here, like a good student, right there, a little funnel, so it'll be easier to pour. Um, you're going to put your permanganate into your burette, and you're going to weigh out an appropriate amount of your sodium oxalate. It's sodium oxalate. It's not the same potassium oxalate that you used when you made your crystal. It's sodium oxalate. So you're going to weigh out a known amount of sodium oxalate, and less is more here. We don't, you want to, on the, whenever you're given a range in this lab, go toward the lower end of the range because then it'll have less time to titrate and less stuff that you have to use. So be sure to measure it appropriately. You're going to dissolve it in water. And there's a really crucial step. This redox equation occurs in an acidic environment, so you have to add sulfuric acid. There's your sulfuric acid. The instructions tell you to do, at, do that. You just can't forget to do it. What else is different is you have to, at the end, when you're at your equivalence point, the only equivalence point can be accepted if your final temperature of your solution is in between 60 and 70 degrees. So you're going to have a hot plate, and it's going to be a stir hot plate and you're going to be able to heat and then turn off the heat and then do the titration with the stir all in one. And you're going to heat. It's best to heat it up above that 60 to 70, so go to about between 80 and 90. Don't get to the point you're boiling because that's bad. Go to about 80 or not, between 80 and 90, and then turn off the heat, start your titration. So by the time you get to your equivalence point, the temperature will have dropped down to the right range. So you cannot have a true equivalence point unless your temperature is in between 60 or 70 degrees. Um, this might happen. It might not. It usually does happen. And it's an anomaly that I've talked to a lot of the people at the reading, and everyone thinks it's an activation energy issue. But if this happens, don't panic. You may add one or two drops 
and your solution will turn bright purple. And it'll be like, what? What's going on? It's okay. Let it stir. The purple will go away. And then you can start the titration as normal. And then it'll be clear for a while until it hits your equivalence point. So just know that that may happen. Um, this is what your equivalence point looks like. I know it looks like phenothaline, but it's not. There is no indicator in this lab. Again, that purple you're seeing is the permanganate purple due to the fact that now all the oxalate has been oxidized and there's nothing there now to change the permanganate from seven to two anymore. So that's why you're starting to see purple. So the more permanganate you add, the darker and darker and darker and darker it's gonna get at this point. So you want the lightest possible color you can see that's purple or pink, whatever, and that is your equivalence point. You cannot have a too light of a purple. If you see it, it's perfect, move on. Um, so you're gonna repeat that three times. One thing I want you to note in your calculations, when you get to moles of sodium oxalate right here, I know we're finding in the equation moles of oxalate, but you didn't weigh out moles of just oxalate, grams, I'm sorry, you didn't weigh out just grams of oxalate, you weighed out grams of sodium oxalate. So you need to be sure to use the molar mass of the full sodium oxalate. That is a huge student mistake. They just think it's oxalate, so they do the molar, the molar mass of this, and that's not correct, okay? Um, you can see here, um, this is a very sensitive titration, so a little bit of fluctuation can cause quite a change in mills. So here, if you look, we have 0 0.07 grams leading to 23.3 mils, and just 0 0.075 brings you all the way to 24.8. Um, so just know that this is kind of the ballpark, 25-ish. Um, so you're pretty safe if you use about 0.07 grams titrating quickly to maybe 15, 18, and then you can slow down. So I give you these numbers as just a little bit of a help to speed up your titrations. Okay, so that's all for experiment two. You do your calculations. I want you to finish your calculations and find your molarity before you move on to the next step. Because if you get some crazy molarity, you have to talk to me or Ms. Rozier about it. Do not sit there and accept the bad molarity and then use it in the calcs that'll affect your entire experiment. Remember, this is an empirical formula. So if you get 1% wrong, it's gonna affect all the other percents in the formula. So please, do your calcs. If you get something that doesn't make sense, he got 0 0.009. Remember, we made it to be 0.01. So it's going to be a little bit off because it's not pure. Um, here's the purity calc. So he showed that that particular batch of permanganate was only 89.95% pure. That doesn't mean anything. This is not a grade. It has nothing to do with you. This is just industrially what, what our permanganate stock looks like. So I have a new bottle. We'll see what it looks like when you all run it. Um, now, experiment three, the reason I'm running this in one video, experiment three is the exact same titration. But now, instead of finding the concentration or the grams of the percent of permanganate, you're going to find the actual percent of the oxalate in your crystal. So this time, you know the permanganate. What's different is you don't know the oxalate. So it's the exact same equation, exact, exact same mole-to-mole ratio. And let me go back and show you that mole-to-mole ratio. You're gonna to have to do that to prove that, but you're gonna use that in your equation going from moles of one thing to moles of the other. So um, in experiment three, you're going to actually dissolve green crystal down here this time. That is our unknown. Our oxalate percentage is unknown, but our concentration now of our permanganate is known. So it's still the exact same titration exact same process, but we're flipping what's known and what's unknown. Um, another difference is you have to add additionally phosphoric acid to the sample as well as the sulfuric acid. Phosphoric acid helps bind those iron three ions that are in the green crystal that will cause, that could cause you not to be able to see the uh, equivalence point. So super important for you to add both of those acids and you're gonna to heat to the same temperature and follow the exact same process that you did before.
titrate, you see how it looks a little muddy? It's not going to be as pretty and clear as when you did the standardization. Due to the presence of the green crystal, your equivalence point, again, may look a little brownish compared to purple, but it's okay. It's going to be the exact same, same process. So if you were successful in experiment two, experiment three will be a breeze. Here are your burette readings you can expect with using, if you use this many grams of crystal. Again, these numbers depend directly on how many grams you use. So if you use different numbers, you're going to get different mills. Again, showing you mills just to help your titrations go a little bit faster. Um, in this, this where you have to be really careful. We are looking at the percent of oxalate alone in the crystal, not sodium oxalate, just the oxalate in the crystal. So because of that, and we're finding the percent by mass, you only use the molar mass of the oxalate crystal itself, not of sodium oxalate. We don't even use sodium oxalate in this titration. In experiment three, we're using the green crystal. So the only thing we're being titrating, the only thing we're directly titrating is the oxalate ion by itself. So you don't need to worry about adding any sort of cation mass into this molar mass. Okay, that's experiment two and three. Please tune in soon for experiment four and five. Have a good day.